Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. In this new season of Clean Cut, I really wanted to do more definitions, since I really like those, and I know I'm not the only one. So I decided to do a subject that I haven't really covered in this way, grace and the work of salvation. This is an important topic, not just because it provides some terms to define, but also because, when you get down to it, the salvation of souls is one of the most important purposes of the Catholic Church. In order for salvation of any sort to take place, grace is needed. So, what do we mean when we say grace? Grace is a term that's used to mean a lot of things in the rest of the world. It can mean elegance, refinement, honor, or it can be a woman's name. However, in the Christian sense, the term grace always refers to the favor of God, granted to human beings freely and without being deserved by us. So, all grace comes from God. In fact, every type of grace is, in a certain sense, from God. But there are still a few questions about grace. Namely, what are the origins of grace? What types of grace are there? And what does grace ultimately do? Since grace comes from God, you might think it has the same origins as the universe itself. In a certain sense, every created thing has the same origins ultimately. However, when grace comes down to human beings, it usually comes to us through the Holy Spirit. This is why the Catechism of the Catholic Church refers to grace as grace of the Holy Spirit. In paragraphs 1987, 1989, 2017, and 2026. Now, grace doesn't come exclusively from the Holy Spirit. It's received from the other persons as well. For instance, paragraphs 1997 and 1999 refer to the grace of Christ, but rather the Holy Spirit plays a special role in distributing grace to people, which is distinct from what the other members of the Trinity do. And I will ask the Father, and he shall give you another paraclete, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, nor knoweth him. But you shall know him, because he shall abide with you, and shall be in you. John fourteen sixteen to 17 The Spirit of Truth. What spirit did the Father send? And when I had begun to speak, the Holy Ghost fell upon them, as upon us also in the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. If then God gave them the same grace as to us also who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that could withstand God? Acts eleven fifteen to 17 That spells it out pretty well. Right there, God gave the grace of the Holy Spirit to people who'd converted. I'll be expanding on the types of grace and their functions over the next couple of episodes, but they're based on the core belief that all goodness ultimately comes from God. All goodness is an undeserved gift from God. That includes even the desire to do good things. We wouldn't have that desire if the grace of God hadn't put it there. That little temporary desire to do right that people often feel or notice is a gift from God called actual grace. However, when a soul responds to God and accepts his gifts willingly, allowing them to grow and live within the heart and affect their actions, they're ready for the next kind. Through the sacraments of baptism, confession, and the anointing of the sick, another type of grace, called sanctifying grace, is given. Sanctifying grace stays in the soul, allowing that person to be saved when they die. However, it can be lost through mortal sin. Next time, we can take a closer look at actual grace and see just what it is, and what functions it performs. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.